More than 93 million Americans are obese and millions more are overweight. That's according to the CDC. But a recent study from the Cleveland Clinic shows few are doing anything about it. 74% of the people surveyed say they are concerned about their weight, and 65% say they worry about getting heart disease because of those extra pounds, but fewer than half have tried to change their diet, and less than a third have talked to their doctor about it. Samantha Heller is a registered dietitian at NYU Langone Health Center. She's here with scientifically proven ways to lose weight. Good morning to you, Samantha. Good morning. So the study shows that people worry about being overweight, but they're not doing enough about it. Why? Well, I, I think there's many reasons. One reason is I think sometimes we don't know that we're overweight or obese. We think of Do we being not a, have a mirror? How would you not know that you're uh, overweight? Or I, I think we think you need to be hundreds of pounds overweight for that to fit into that category, but in fact, it's not at all. Mm. And if you look at a BMI, a body mass index chart, and you look at your height and your weight, you might be surprised what category you fit into. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing that people really need to pay attention to. You've got to. so many tips to go through, so let's go through these mm -hmm. quickly. How important is your diet compared to exercise when it comes Good to question. weight loss? Yeah. Diet is everything. Yeah. Diet is more, as, as much as I love exercise, and I know you do too, diet is everything. It's not only how much you eat, but it's the quality of the food you eat that's going to make People a difference. People say calories in, calories out. Do you believe that? Yes. I, I, there's truth in that, but I think what you eat makes a difference. As you know, you can lose weight eating cake, mm -hmm. but it's not healthy. So we want to create a, a, a sustainable dietary pattern that we can keep for the rest of our lives that include all the healthy foods to help our bodies keep us healthy and fight disease. You encourage people to look at favorite foods in a new way. Macaroni and cheese, staple in everybody's household. Mm -hmm. What can you do? Well, instead of buying it in a box with a powder packet, although it tastes good, make it, from, make it from scratch at home. And you can do things like what I do if I'm going to make it. As I, when I'm boiling the water for the pasta, I throw in some cauliflower. I cook it till it's tender. I take that out. I puree it. So I'm going to make that into part of the sauce to make it creamy. But it's got all those healthy compounds that vegetables have. It's got fiber. So you can boost it up and add vegetables. Really, you can add these non-starchy vegetables to anything and make it healthier for you. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know that they have issues with their weight but you know life is busy there's a lot going on um, and so sometimes when they hear this advice it's kind of hectoring and they're you know so what is the kind of trick or key turning point for somebody who knows all these things intellectually yeah. but still right. has this barrier. I love the idea of people seeing registered dietitians because he or yes. she can help individualize a plan that's going to work for you and what you do is going to be different than what Nora does yeah. right and different than what I do or what Gail does so mm -hmm. that's an option and insurance does cover some of that but also make a plan sit down with your family plan what you're going to eat during the week that's going to help you uh, avoid food waste save money it's going to get your kids and your family involved in the shopping and the prep for the food have a plan Plan. But the insurance piece is important because a lot of people may not have the money for that. But so the dietitian can be covered by insurance. Some dietitian uh, services can be covered by insurance. Uh, excuse me, insurances. Some dietitians might work on a sliding scale for you. So I mean, it's a great opportunity. There's classes. But it's so important I, to make the point that one size does not fit all. I think people right. think if she's doing well or he's doing well, I need to do that. Right. And you, I do think you have to stress that you've got to figure out what works for you. What works for you? Because as I said, what I do for me is going to be different yeah, than what's yeah. going. To work for you, it has to take into account your budget, your food preferences, your lifestyle. A lot of questions I get. Intermittent fasting, does it work? We're already intermittent fasting when we sleep. Yeah. Most of us don't eat during the night, so that's great. There's no one kind of intermittent fasting. There's many different iterations. I like the idea, perhaps, of closing the kitchen after dinner. Uh, and some people say they only eat between certain hours. So after dinner, when you've had dinner, a lot of people sit in front of the TV or the computer and they eat their chips. And Jennifer their Lopez is recommending the no carb, no sweet diet for 10 days. Yeah. And I'm actually thinking about doing that. Okay. And <laughs> 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 I think, your time, been, I think your time would be better spent doing regular it. visits with the dietitian. This is okay. my this is my big thing. Yeah. Why do we spend more time getting our hair and nails done than we I do know, seeing prof right. health professionals? What if we spent the same amount of time going to dietitians, uh, nutritionists, cancer specialists, skin doctors? You know all that they're saying. I gotta go, but like this is like my new thing. Getting it's our health. Very good advice. Getting our health. Yeah. But we Thank just you. don't do it. Okay, we'll be right back. Sorry, we ran out of time. It was so good. <laughs>